about the money doctor? How about money that? Money doctor is here. <laughs> uh, when it comes to decisions with our money, we know we should approach them with a rational and critical thought process, but it turns out many people don't do that. <laughs> Oh boy, financial instructor Michael Mazarin from the Retirement Education Foundation joins us to talk about the emotions that are tied to how we spend money and how to, at least how to be aware of it mm -hmm. and then maybe figure out what's motivating you to spend because it, it's this thing where you end up in, in a situation where you're unhappy with your finances and it's and really we just have ourselves to blame, right? It, it really does. I mean, so behavioral finance comes down to combining economics with psychology. And when it comes to money, money is so much more emotional and psychological than people give it credit for. And even the people who are, you know, the engineers, the CPAs, they're in their careers, they're, they're logic, data-driven people. Even those people who think I'm logical, I'm unemotional when it comes to money, you are, and by trying to tell yourself you're not, you're just making these mistakes more and more frequently. There's so much. We, I feel like as Americans or people, we just want excess, mm -hmm. a bigger TV, a better car, a bigger house. Um, and part of the, and, and we think it's going to make us, or our brains are telling us this is gonna make us feel better, this is gonna make us happier, this is gonna give us better quality of life, it's gonna make our kids happier. So I would keep it up with the Joneses, social media, people see people taking vacations. We were talking before we came on how if the kids want something because their friends have it, you don't, right. want your, you, don't, you don't want to say no to the kids, you don't want people judging you for saying no to your, all these different societal factors play a factor. Factor. So there are these biases. So, for example, herd mentality. People think, well, everyone's doing it. I should be doing this too. If everyone's taking vacations, if everyone's buying a new car, if everyone's buying the new home, I should do it too. Well, maybe they're making mistakes, but, but you don't see the mistakes they're making. The mistakes they're making are they're piling up debt or overconfidence bias. People think that they have some edge in the stock market, so they're buying and selling because they think they have this edge. Yeah, they really think they, they know don't. more than... <laughs> How do you guard against that, though? Because I, I feel like um, so many people I know, I struggle with... Um, I bought something last night on Amazon. I didn't, I didn't need it. Um, it, it was a it was a pot to boil crab legs, <laughs> and I have a hundred pots. I didn't need this pot, but it was like a snap judgment. Well, it's true. I mean, dealing with the influx of social media and how that and and or our digital life now, how it is so easy to spend mm -hmm. money. That's got to add um, a whole bunch of problems. You know, the first step is trying to be more introspective. And candidly, this is more difficult for men than women. Men, we just aren't as in touch with our emotions and our biases. We kind of think, oh, we're, you know, we're smart, we can figure this out. To, to let your guard down internally and recognize, okay, I might not have all the answers, is the first step to and learning about these biases. You can identify them with yourself. One of our instructors through the class has a doctorate in psychology. He can read me like a book, and he can point out sometimes when I'm being biased, and I, I have to take a, take a step back and realize, okay, wait a minute. I think this is my overconfidence bias, or this is my hindsight bias. There are so many factors that play. What does that, that mean, Michael? Because we see this on, they see these um, biases on the screen there. So overconfidence bias, what does that mean? So that's a pretty common one. It's people just overconfident. You know, if you ask a room full of people, raise your hand if you think you are an above average driver. 80 to 85% of the room is going to raise their hand. Oh, I mean, Statistically, to, to, to the highest not, degree. That's not possible. We can't all be above average drivers. That's not possible, statistically speaking. But everyone thinks they are. It's the same so thing So when it with, goes to spending, how does that work? So with, with spending or with managing the finances in general, people think, you know, I can manage this. I can this, afford this. I can I'll afford it this. Out. I'll yeah. figure it out. I'll make up, I'll make up this money at mm. some point it's in the future again. It's only 50 bucks. Right. It's only 100 bucks. Yes, it's only 20 exactly. bucks. That exactly. all adds up. Yes, it does. Yeah, I guess the key is understanding, and this takes a lot, but need versus wants, of mm -hmm. course, but also try to understand what is this, what is this doing for you? What is buying this item, spending this money? Uh, can you afford it, right? And, and then what is it so doing for that, you? That brings the aspect of budgeting into it, but just understanding, okay, what is the overall goal here? What, what are these dollars supposed to be doing for me? I have my safety dollars, I have my, my, my fund money dollars, my investing dollars. What are each of these dollars supposed to be doing for me? And then once you've got those buckets set up, let them work.
A yeah. Ask yourself these questions. Uh, talk to yourself about this yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> Seriously, you're going to be back next hour. We're going to continue the conversation. Last hour, we talked about how your emotions can play a role in financial decisions you make as more than 4 million baby boomers retire each year. They're entering, they're encountering another aspect of financial psychology, and that is a fear of retirement failure. Joining us, uh, financial instructor Michael Mazarant from the Retirement Education Foundation. So, uh, Michael, this one is a tricky one mm -hmm. because uh, a lot of people entering retirement age, you know, obviously, do I have enough? What what did what did uh, some of the spending that I did earlier in my life right. <laughs> um, mean for right now? Uh, what do you tell uh, clients uh, and and people? Well, people come to the class, they're looking for guidance on retirement. And really, we, I mean, we talked about how psychology influences money a, a few uh, 20, 30 minutes ago here. And that's, you know, in our 20s and our 30s, when we're, we, we got our first job, and it's really tempting to start spending, taking the vacations, buying the new car. If we can start saving to the 401ks and the IRAs instead, it puts you on a great path. 30s and 40s, now we're maybe buying a home, starting a family, kids' costs in our 40s and 50s, the kids are going to college, there are always struggles, there are always challenges. Along the way, if we can keep saving for retirement, which is a huge goal for almost everybody, if not everybody, then you're putting yourself on a better path. But really what it comes down to is, when can I afford to retire? How much can I afford to spend? And these are massive questions that people face all the time. Yeah, there's got to be something that everyone can do. There's a lot of fear sometimes around, oh gosh, I messed up. I moved from job to job in my mm -hmm. you know, 20s and 30s. Now in my 40s, is it too late? Can I catch up? So, so I was, how I, did you start? I was having this conversation with someone uh, just a few minutes ago here. Yeah. It is never too late. Mm -hmm. The best time to start was yesterday or last year or five or 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. The next best time to start is today. Start yeah. now, do whatever you can. Start with five bucks a week, get it to 10, 20, 100 bucks a week, whatever you can do. And really the best way to fight that fear is education. Mm -hmm. People, it's, it's sad. People don't have a whole lot of financial literacy when it comes to retirement. Yeah. People understand the basics of, you know, invest in the stock market, it goes up, it struggles once in a while. But for a lot of people, that's about it. And not understanding how much can I afford to spend from which accounts at which times and which tax brackets, Social Security, pensions, there's uh, Medicare. There's so many factors that go into this, not just investing or the stock market. In uh, people that take your classes, and we'll let everybody know how, how you can sign up for a class with Michael and, and his team. but. I would think the age is people like me in their mid-40s, 50s, maybe even early 60s who are mm -hmm. five years away from retirement or 10 years away from retirement. What is the, the general age range, if there is one, of the people that take your classes? So it's typically mid-40s on. Yeah. We have people mid-40s through their 80s. We have people mm -hmm. coming to the class still trying to learn because it's never too late to learn. But people very frequently say, I wish I came to the class 10 years ago. I know yeah. it, that's because, what I was getting at. Because yep. all of the time people recognize, well, I have what I have now and that's great. And I, and I now know what I can do to improve. But boy, if I knew this 10, 15, 20 years ago, I'd be in such a better spot today. Mm -hmm. You also wonder, you know, if you can trust <clears throat> the person who's helping you. You know, you hear these stories and financial advisors, this yes. and that. Is there a one size fits all? Should you all be, should we all be maxing out 401k? Should we all, or does it really, is it really that individualized that you have to go and meet somebody like you and take a class? Well, so there are a lot of rules of thumb and, you know, the more we can save, the better, things like that. Mm -hmm. But really, Really, there are a lot of individualized factors. When I'm buying a house, how much home can I afford? Yeah. Should I be saving for my kid's college or can I not afford, not afford to do that? We see a lot of people stretch to pay for the kid's college right. because they want to give the kids a great start in life and it's very noble of the mm -hmm. parents, yeah. but they're hurting their retirement badly by doing that. And so it really comes down to, there are some rules of thumb that for sure can apply to everyone, but it is individualized. College feels like it's a, and I'm getting a rap cue, so unfair to ask the question, but <laughs> college feels like such a big burden on yes. not only the students themselves but the parents too because parents are going to want to help their kids out they it's do. very hard to say mm -hmm. you just go take 100 percent of the debt out we got nothing for you because we want to keep it for our retirement for that's sure. extremely hard to say and
and you know, we tell people, look, it's kind of like what you hear in the plane. Put the mask on yourself first, the yeah. oxygen yeah. mask, because <laughs> I promise you, if you stretch to help the kids now and you're dependent on the kids in the future mm -hmm. as, as a result, no one's happy with that. So right. if the kids have got to work on their own, they have time. You don't have as much time in your 40s, 50s, 60s. Right. They have time. You don't. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, maybe when it's all said and done, then you give them whatever's left and they can pay all the uh, A debt legacy off when you're the, gone, a right. living legacy when Absolutely. you're retired. There are ways to structure that. Michael, great stuff. Where can people find you and where can people find uh, an opportunity to take a class? So we have a lot of content online, you know, videos, webinars on our website, and you can sign up for the class there as well. It's retirementplanningedu.org. Awesome stuff. Michael Mazran. He's going to join us uh, a lot over the next uh, <laughs> You'll be seeing a lot little more bit. Of yeah, I mean, okay. well, it's just such an important conversation yes. to have, and we don't do it enough. Mm -hmm. And there's so much to cover. Yes, yeah. absolutely.